What is going on guys, is actually here, welcome back to another Wolves video. Today I'm going to be talking about the game between Aston Villa and Wolves at Villa Park. And I said, uh, for the game against Bournemouth, the 1-0 win in midweek, this was a massive game. A massive, massive game. We, we overcame two stumbling blocks, two potential stumbling blocks. We beat West Ham convincingly. And we beat Bournemouth rather less convincingly, but we still got the job done in the end. And Bournemouth weren't really at their best. But this game was probably the toughest de test we've had out of the three. And these are three teams that are struggling down the bottom and are trying to pre preserve their Premier League status. And as I say, we've overcome two so far. We've done very well. Because we could easily have slipped up against these teams, especially in the first half of the season, where we're often conceding first. It could have easily been a uh, a, a massive stumbling block in the road. But well, I'm I'm proud to say we overcame all of these three challenges with flying colours. In this game, we put in a massive performance, a, a brilliant performance. And I have to say, Villa, they they tested us in the first half, and we were resolute. It's testament to what we have achieved so far this season, and especially since the restart as well. We've been absolutely magnificent, and in a game like this, a Midlands derby like this, you have to, no matter no matter how well or how poorly Villa. Uh, we're doing, and obviously they're struggling a lot, and they're in the relegation zone. No matter the circumstances, it's a Midlands derby. Form box for any derby, in fact, completely go out the window. And for the first half, especially, it was it was definitely the case. And Villa were putting on the pressure because they need to. They need they need to get results at this time. And well, they had they had a couple of half chances. We we had the best chance of the half through Diogo Jota, which I'll come on to in a moment. But Villa, I mean, their their main man is obviously Jack Greenish. Without him, they probably wouldn't even be in the Premier League. I mean, him and Conor Hurahan and Am Amar El Ghazi, those three, especially. Without them, they wouldn't be in the Premier League. And e even with him in the squad, it 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 didn't seem to have any effect. He is pretty he probably he's probably going to get a move in the summer to a top six top six club. He's been rumored to 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 go to a top six club for for the last couple of years now, and he probably is when Villa eventually inevitably go down. But yeah, it's he he was he was definitely the danger man, and we did we did quite well to stop it stop him. And one of the main highlights, apart from the good goals we have scored so far since the Premier League restart. The one of the main highlights is defensive displays. We put in an absolute shift in these three games, West Ham especially in the, in that second half, um, and also in this game against Villa. More so against Villa, I would say, than West Ham because West Ham they were poor, they didn't really put a shift in. That's it was similar with Bournemouth as well. But anyway, we put a brilliant defensive shift in because. Villa, they don't have the greatest of teams. They don't have the greatest of teams. <laughs> and that's probably the understatement of the century. But, yeah, they don't have the greatest of teams. And, and well, it was... They, they have they have got a few danger men, obviously, with Jack Grealish being the most prominent. And it was, he was at his usual tricks again, diving everywhere he, go, everywhere he went. And... We did well to stop him, and especially in the second half. I mean, Villa, they ha they were desperate. They were getting desperate, as, as the second half wore on especially. They were really getting desperate. And talking about that Diogo Jota chance right at the end of the first half, what a chance that was. A brilliant ball through. I think it was from Ruben Neves, but I was, I'm not quite sure. But a brilliant ball through. Probably either from Neves or Martinho, to be honest. As I say, I'm not quite sure. Be a, a, a lovely ball through, and Jota clean throw on goal. He ha he had he had the 
he had the time to take it down and maybe ta- take one touch, maybe even two, but at least one touch he had the time to take down, take it down and control it. But he didn't, and he blasted it over the bar. And what an unbelievable chance that was to a game front. And fortunately, what happened in the second half happened. And obviously, I'll come on, come onto that in a moment. But yeah, that was that was a glorious opportunity, and especially in games like this, where you have to take your chances, you have to take your opportunities, because no matter how crap the team is, no matter how how, how crap Villa are. They've been jammy. They have definitely been jammy quite a few times this season, and they can, you know, when when they're desperate, they can nick a goal from somewhere. And fortunately, they didn't. But that's the sort of thing that can happen when you don't take your chances in 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 derbies like this, where your concentration levels have to be extremely high. But going on into the second half, and Villa, well, throughout the, throughout the game, throughout the game, Villa had a lot of possession, but they didn't do an awful lot with it. And well, it was kind of the wrong reverse in the second half. We had um, a lot more of the ball, and we didn't, we didn't. It wasn't exactly a game where we created a lot of opportunities, but the, the opportunities we did create were very, very good, good ones. And Traore, he came on in the second half. I was surprised, really, that he didn't start the game because, obviously, he's had two ass- two assists in his last two games. He's been absolutely excellent. So I'm I'm surprised. I'm surprised that, that he didn't start the game. But he came on as an impact sub, and he, once he came on, he was an absolute nuisance. And he really did give uh, Neil, Neil Taylor uh, a run for his money. But the star of the, sh- the, star of the show... Neander Dendonka got the goal on the hour mark, and what a brilliant goal it was! A brilliant, uh, a brilliant start to the move as well. Brilliant turn by Johnny, <laughs> left his man for dead, and a, br- a brilliant run, surging forward, and it f- it fell to Dendonka with a brilliant finish, kind of like the finish that Diego Chata should have made in the first half, but absolutely brilliant finish. Only his third goal of the season. I'm surprised he hasn't scored more really. But I guess he he hasn't exactly been given the opportunities to to he hasn't I don't think he's really been given the freedom to move forward and really uh, attack. But he's that kind of player that can that can cause trouble, and you don't really expect it from him, a player like him, because he's not really been prominent this season. It's more been about Neves, Moutinho, Jimenez, Jota, all that link up play, and Dan Dong has just been really left to roam around in the background, but brilliant finish by him, and and he really did play well today. And an excellent three points, an excellent three points, we just we just rode it out. Villa were looking desperate um, after that point, and it's a team, it's, a, it's typical, typical of a team that are really struggling and are really trying to get points on the board to try and scrape survival and looking at their performance today looking at their performance today I don't think they'll survive I mean they just don't have the, they don't have the quality of players and I mean that makes me very happy but I'm sure it'll make it uh, a lot of Villa fans very sad which well which makes me even more happier <laughs> the more the merrier but uh, yeah brilliant three points and now we've got Arsenal we've got Arsenal next Saturday, and that is also on TV. We've got a lot of games on TV at the moment. We've got, we had uh, West Ham on Sky, we've had this one on BT, and we've got Arsenal again on Sky on ne- next Saturday evening. So, ne- getting a lot of TV coverage, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just a testament to the, to, to the way we've been playing this season. Brilliant football, and these last two games, yeah, we've, we've grinded out results. They haven't exactly been pretty results, We've grinded them out, and well, if you're going for if you're going for the highest heights, I guess that's that's what you have to do. Yeah, Arsenal next weekend, and we've got quite quite a lucky run really. We've we've beaten we, we've we've won three in a row now, looking for a fourth win in a row against Arsenal, and 
got, had quite quite a, a lucky run uh, of games. Teams are really struggling. Three teams are really struggling for relegation, and now uh, a team that's well, it's 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 on the road to recovery. It's had a cup a bad a bad couple of games, but Arsenal did get a two 0 win over Southampton a couple of days ago. So I guess they are on the road to recovery, but hopefully we can catch them cold at Molyneux. We'll have to just wait and see for that one. But yeah, if you did enjoy this match review, make sure to smash that like button. And we're up to fifth in the table now. Closing in on Chelsea. Just two points behind them now. And three points behind third place Leicester. Who would have thought that? Yeah, brilliant win. And I shall see you next Saturday with a review of the Arsenal game. Until then, goodbye guys. That's the way every day goes. Looking back, I know we started falling. We were falling in love